What's going on everyone? Today we are turning this into this in Photoshop, so let's get started. Alexander, JoffOxFotography.com. Hope everyone's doing all right. We are doing basic compositing within Photoshop today. I've gotten a few questions asking how I added those backgrounds in a recent snake photo shoot I did with Steph. A little disclaimer, there is some implied nudity in this shoot. It was a Cleopatra-themed shoot, and as I was doing my research on the shoot, Cleopatra's bitten in the uh, this region of the anatomy. So I figured going implied or topless would be a good uh, look for this shoot. Also, it was kind of an impromptu shoot. Our buddies, uh, Kevin and Laura, with some snakes, they breed snakes, said, hey, you wanna do a shoot this weekend? I'm like, absolutely. So, kind of threw some things together. I didn't have time to make or order a chest and neck piece that I wanted to have to ultimately sell, that this is an Egyptian style uh, or theme shoot from Cleopatra. Uh, so we went with, uh, I did have a tan backdrop in stock, so we went with that, kind of giving it a sand and Egyptian uh, lighting vibe. Uh, but I knew I'm going to have to go heavy in post-production to really sell the theme. So that's where compositing comes in. So let's jump into Photoshop and see what's up. Here is my original image. And I knew, I mean, it's fine in terms of the basics and the fundamentals of photography, but I really wanted to add a little more to it. And composites are a great way to do that. However, be careful because compositing can really, uh, if you don't do it right, if you don't take your time with it, it's going to look really cheesy and fake. And in fact, <laughs> this composite might look cheesy and fake to some of you that have been uh, doing this for some time. However, I'm just using this photo as an example of how you can just quickly change a background and make it look somewhat realistic in terms of perspective. And that's what we're going to talk about primarily today. We're not going to talk so much about color balancing and matching as much as we are just perspective and using your warp tool for your advantage. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, jump into it. Uh, first and foremost, if you're interested, here is my um, reference image that I'm going to be using for the background. And this was my mood board. Uh, I try to make a mood board before every shoot, just putting a little pre-production planning into it. And I knew that it was going to be, like I mentioned, uh, Photoshop intensive or composite intensive. Uh, we have our snakes, we have our model. I was kind of, this is the vibe I would have loved to go for, but we just didn't have time to build that look. Part two coming soon. And we have uh, some, we have Cleopatra here. Uh, and if you don't know, she commits suicide by having a snake bite her breast and whatnot. So um, anyways, this was our starting image and this is what we did to the final image. And I'm going to show you what I did. And notice the perspective at the bottom here, it kind of just flows out like it's part of the floor. Um, I'll show you how to do that. So it's really not that hard, not that difficult. This is, like I said, a very simple composite. So let's go ahead and move our reference photo or our background and just hit V and drag it to Egyptian princess number 12. Hit command T and go ahead and um, bring it out to match the dimensions of your original photo like so. And there you have it. Now let's go ahead and turn that layer off for now and go back to our original image. Hit wand for your selection tool and hit select subject. And Photoshop CC 2021 does a pretty decent job of selecting your subject. However, you're gonna to wanna to go touch it up and make sure that the uh, selection is in fact made. Uh, here you can see some of the hair isn't made. And again, if you really wanna do this right, uh, you wanna use your pen tool, but um, you can get away with, uh, with it here given that the background is pretty light and um, there's not much of a contrast between her and the background. So let's go ahead and uh, just make sure everything is selected and let's unselect that right there. And again, you can use masking layer, um, later to uh, kind of refine your edges, but that looks pretty good overall. And Good. The hair is a tricky part, especially with the pen tool, but the wand selection tool, and then of course, refine mask. If you are using the pen tool, will do a great job at cleaning up those edges. All right. From there, uh, make sure that um, you separate your subject from the background. So just hit command J and now you can see that we have um, a separated layer here in layer three of our, of our subject. Let's go ahead and move our background beneath the layer of our subject and turn it back on. And as you can see, uh, this is what we get. It looks pretty bad right now. Let's go ahead and clean it up. So what I normally do is I can use a, re a refine tool to go ahead and clean up the edges, but in the sake of time and um, 
Again, it's just a supplemental Instagram post, but again, I want to make sure all my photos and all my, I'm putting the due effort and all my work, right? I don't ever like to say, oh, it's just an Instagram photo. You should absolutely take pride in all your work. Uh, so let's go ahead and reduce the opacity on our background layer just to kind of blend it in with the background. And that looks good right there. And as you can see, it's already cleaning up our subject, making it look a little more refined. Uh, to further enhance the background, let's go ahead and um, just open up our camera raw. And I will go ahead and do some uh, clarity. I'll, um, I'll adjust the clarity, I'll enhance it, and I'll make it a little more orange. And uh, I should say, adjust the temperature, make it a little more warm. And there we go. That kind of just helps blend it uh, in the image a little better, in my opinion. And I'll go ahead and reduce the opacity even more. There we go. And to add the depth effect, because um, we don't want it the same focal uh, range as our subject, let's go ahead and add a blur to it. So we'll just go and add a simple Gaussian blur, nothing too much. And this is also going to help reduce that contrast between the subject and our, um, and our background, or the refined edge, I should say. <clears throat> and very good. So that's looking a lot better than what we originally had. And let's go ahead and clean up. You can see part of her um, the snake and her arm and her chest is missing. So let's go ahead and um, add a layering mask on our background and just paint in the areas that are affected. And just like that, something like that. And right around her side here. And this is where you might want to take your time. Um, definitely take your time. It almost might be worth it just to have used the pen tool in the first place. But um, again, this is, this is just one of many methods you can use. Compositing is, a great, um, is great in the fact that you can do many different ways. So let's just go ahead and clean it up. You can go all day doing this. And that looks good. Let's get rid of the blotchiness around the hair. Let's see, the hair is a big, the big problem. But you won't be able to notice it once we're done. And let's go ahead. We can probably just even... And then same thing on this layer. If you have something like that, part of the background's coming out, you can just hit another mask and just get rid of that right there. I'll probably do the same thing right here, actually. Again, you could spend all day on this, but you wanna take your time and I wanna show you like um, where I, of course, zoomed in really close. That, so that's looking a little better now. And let's just do a quick around her legs and feet. There we go. And nope. There we go. Perfect. There we have it. And that is uh, looking pretty good. Let me fix this. Just look at what areas kind of draw your eye and figure out what you'd want to do. What looks good, what doesn't look good. All right. So I'm happy with this. Coffee break. Once you're happy with your selection, um, what I like to do is go ahead and apply your layer masks just to clean everything up. And uh, one thing now is once we focused on matching our colors, we did it with the background. Let's go ahead and do it with our subject. So bring up camera raw on your subject and just warm it up slightly to make it uh, somewhat match your background in terms of lighting. And there we have it. Once we have lighting down, let's go ahead and look at um, our perspective and the way we want to, obviously she wouldn't just be standing on something that's completely linear like that. We wanna make it look like it's coming out on the floor. Let's go ahead and hit Command T on our background layer. Uh, right click and go to Warp. And what you'll see is uh, the ability to basically have um, um, various warping tools I go up here and you come up here to this uh, line with a circle in it. Uh, like a, I always call it like um, split warp perspective and just find the area where the, se the seam or the crease would be and make it there and then drag out your corners. And as you can see, it makes it look like she's now standing on a floor, which is uh, just gives it a little more realistic uh, look to it. 
So there you have it. You've transformed a seemingly boring photo like this into something that has a little more uh, umph to it. And it only takes five or 10 minutes and you can uh, really just enhance your photos that way. Uh, yeah, so from there, Command F and Command S to save and airdrop it to your phone and post it on Instagram. So yeah, there it is. I hope it's been helpful. The most uh, time consuming part is your subject selection. You can utilize a pen tool. I utilize the wand tool here, it did an automatic selection, then I just cleaned it up. But uh, for the most clean and the uh, um, precise method of selecting your subject, I would recommend the pen tool. And from there, just put in as many layers as you want to build the custom photo that you want. And you can really do a whole lot of crazy cool things with compositing. So I'll leave it at that. I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, consider giving me a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next video.